I thought since I, uh, a lot, bunch of people have asked about Yahoo, and I, I did spend about nine years at Yahoo, although it was three years back, I would just provide a, a br brief reaction to the deal that was just announced. Uh, I, I don't know, actually, a show of hands here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that a lot. I, I like taking. I, I guess for both sides, uh, um, and you, you can create the matrix. I personally think it's, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's sad, and um, and it, it's it's hard to see what for us at the time was an amazing accomplishment to really catch up with Google in search technology some five years ago, and to see that effort go to waste. But I also think it was it was a value maximization deal that Carol did, and that she couldn't really have done much better than she did, what Wall Street thinks notwithstanding. Um, but anyway, I'm going to move on to the top, which is uh, selling online in the age of free. This is something that's near and dear to my heart. I, I, I'm CEO of a company called Lala.com, which is a music company. And as you all know, free is one of those things that impacts music companies in a, in a really big way. Uh, I never talk with cards, and I don't know why I have them now, so I apologize if it seems awkward. I'll do my best. Um, you know, it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of a strange world we're in today. Mail is free, but water costs money. Um, YouTube is free, but TV costs money, uh, so on. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess I had a question. Of all you new startup people with one million in funding or more, how many of you are planning on selling, planning on giving your product away for free? One, two. And uh, I, just so I get a feel, and all of, of the same group of folks who are, who are in that startup camp, how many are planning on selling something? Cool. So more people are selling than are giving away for free. So, uh, I don't know if that's indicative of anything, but maybe we can come back to that at the end of the conversation. Um, okay, so, so I, I got to say this. It's, it's completely inappropriate, but every time... <laughs> I think of this free versus paid quandary. I'm reminded of the old joke that probably all have heard, so maybe it's not as inappropriate as it would be otherwise, about the really suave guy who is, goes to a party and approaches the most attractive woman in the room and asks her, hey, for a million dollars, would you be with me? And she thinks it over and says, for a million dollars? Yeah, uh, I'll do it for a million dollars. And he thinks for a moment, and he says, well, for $100, would you do it? And she says, what kind of woman do you think I am? <laughs> and he says, well, we've already determined that. Now we're just arguing about the price. <laughs> so free is really the, the same thing, right? Once something's offered to you for free, you already know just about everything you need to know or will know everything you need to know about that product. But the real question is, What's the hidden price? What's the real price? Because someone's going to pay. Somewhere, somehow along the line, someone is going to pay. So, um, I guess my opinion is, is pretty simple. That in the end, there's always going to be a lot of free and a lot of for pay, a lot of commerce on the net. Um, one of the outputs of this talk, I hope, is some idea as you're creating your companies, as you're thinking about how your pricing, free is fundamentally a pricing decision, works, how you come about making that decision. And it's really interesting. There's a lot of work lately that's been done, a lot of words that have been applied to this particular problem. So I'll delve into some of those. And you can use those to actually help yourself analyze what's what. Moving on. Um, so there's clearly a lot of free stuff out there. There's free search, free email, free music, free gambling, free pornography, lots of free stuff. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to kind of go to free.com and see what they had to offer. They have the first one I love, free government grants, free tooth whitener, free acne medicine, free cash, recipes, diets, coupons, books, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, there's lots more. There's totally 
freestuff.com, freestuff.com, thunderfap.com, really love that one, yes, all for free, etc. Well, one question to ask yourself, is there anything new here? Is free anything new? Um, I thought it'd be interesting to start off quickly looking at the history of free. Uh, I started a company in 1994 on the net, and it was interesting. It was, it was really almost all we talked about. Back then, everything was free. Um, it's interesting to look back then what it meant to an entrepreneur selling things for free, giving things away for free, and what it means today. So where did it start? Uh, if you've, uh, the show of hands, have, have any folks here read Chris Anderson's book, Free? Any of you? He goes, he, he goes way back. It's an interesting book, and I, I, I very much recommend that you all read it, especially entrepreneurs. It doesn't mean it's, it, I wouldn't go on to say that every one of his conclusions is something I necessarily agree with, but it's, he, he goes through a very useful set of analyses about what free means to you as a, as a business person, as an entrepreneur. Um, I mean, he goes back to where free Jello recipes were given away to, to sell the first set boxes of, of gelatin. I'd rather start with, with the internet and stuff I'm more familiar with. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee, when he created the World Wide Web in the very early 90s, gave it all away for free, and that was pretty interesting. In fact, I, uh, I had this really annoying interview question back when I was a, at a startup that sort of said, hey, so what's the World Wide Web? And, and, and people would kind of look at me wide-eyed and, and try to come up with some reasonable answer. And then I said, so that's okay, but what made it big? What happened? And where I usually come out on that is I say, well, you know, there are these dudes at NCSA, the Super, Supercomputing Center at Urbana-Champaign, Illinois, with a guy named Mark Andreessen, and what they did, which was really unique, is they created this amazing software that merged text and graphics, and they gave it away for free. It's in our DNA. You gave it away for free, and the rest, as I say, is history. And later, of course, he formed a company and tried to sell the thing, right? They tried to sell Netscape, and for the most part, it didn't work that well. Most people, most of the time, still got Netscape Navigator for free, although they did, to, to businesses, try to sell it. But then, of course, um, Bill Gates wrote his famous memo in 1995 called, I guess, the Internet Tidal Wave Memo. And as a result of that, Microsoft, the company that made money on software, gave Internet Explorer away for free thereby cementing the doom of, of Netscape in the end. Um, and perhaps one could argue planting the seeds for the, I don't know if doom or death or anyway, maybe the last quarter where Microsoft finally missed for his own company. And of course, my guys came next. Yahoo was always free, and when we started, everything we had was free. Uh, if, not, if no other guys drove the free phenomenon on the net, um, you have to look to, to Yahoo. I'm going to try to catch up on my silly cards here. So, at this point, in the, in the early stages of the net, frees off to the races. In fact, if you think about it, in the early days, you really couldn't sell things. Um, there wasn't any, you know, there wasn't any visa. You really, the e-commerce was completely nascent. Uh, at our company, um, uh, we were a, a small company that, that ended up doing directories and building web-based email, but we also had a for-pay web pages um, product, and we sold PGP keys, if you guys know what those are. We did everything we could to try to, try to actually have real revenue, and you know, we struggled with it every day. A slight kind of interesting anecdote. Before I was at that company, I gave away web pages for free. And I had a different partner, and, and I tried to explain to him why free web pages was going to be awesome. And he said, you're an idiot. How can you ever make money doing this? And I said, I have no idea. 
but I just think it's going to be big. And, and about three years later, when I was at Yahoo and GeoCities got bought for $4 billion, he sent me a nice email that just said, I owe you $2 billion. <laughs> So, everyone tried everything. You know, in the end, if you were losing money on every user, all you had to do was make it up in volume. Isn't that a cool picture for that slide? What was the answer going to be? In the end, it wasn't that complicated, right? We figured it out. All we had to do was advertise. We were a new medium. We were all media companies. Media companies, what do they do? They advertise. So, we did it. The problem was solved. My guys at Yahoo were instrumental in that transformation. And how did we do it? Well, we created the meekest possible advertising thing you could imagine. It was the all-powerful banner. Um, for those of you who have or will read free, he, he calls this a, a three-party market. He has these four different types of free, and it doesn't really matter what the other ones are. This is by far the biggest. There's also freemium, which we'll talk about. Um, but this is where a third party pays the bills, right? Third party, it's still all free to you. It's the way Google works, the way Gmail theoretically works, Yahoo Mail, etc. Okay, part two. I'm going fast here. Part two. Damn it. <laughs> turns out, turns out, the reality was those banners, they never really worked very well. They are lousy messaging vehicles. And what is advertising if it isn't the idea of getting a, your idea in someone's head? Banners don't do such a hot job. So find a, a, a sort of a faky monetization mechanism with all the bubble stuff that happened there, you, you get that. And that was the end of free. At Yahoo, we said, you know, this free idea, it sounded OK at the time. But the problem is you're just based on advertising. This thing seems really cyclical. We had $1.2 billion in revenue, and now we have $700 million, and that sucks. So what do we do? Well, we sell things. The CTO said to me, you will not create a new feature that does not get paid for. We are going to diversify revenue streams. And we did it. Went too fast. Forget that. We diversified our revenue streams. We created premium services. I launched the first several of them at Yahoo. The first one was called Listings Express to get in the Yahoo directory, which was our search engine you had to pay if you wanted expedited consideration of your link, believe it or not. But we launched Yahoo Personals for pay. We launched Yahoo Small Business. We launched Premium Mail. We built a multi-hundred billion, hundred billion, hundred million dollar business. <laughs> our revenues were like 60% advertising, but 40% premium. Things were looking good. But it turned out it was all a mirage. It was all a hiccup. And the road to delivery of all sorts of free services so we're driven by a bunch of things, including a revived ad market, improved technology, improved bandwidth penetration. And a new wave of technologies that actually made the delivery of free better. And perhaps more than anything else, the rise of a new web superpower who dispensed with the banner entirely, never believed in it, and actually did advertising on the internet way it ought to be done, advertising that works. So here we are today. Free is everywhere. Yahoo, Twitter, Yahoo Mail, Facebook, Google, Gmail, the New York Times. And lately, the idea of free has sort of engendered a lot of conversation. It's a meme that, that even though it's been there all along, has all of a sudden become something talked about in a very specific way. There's, there's, I, I think Chris Anderson with his book free, I guess I'm always talking to this side, I'll try to talk to this side too a little bit. Um, 
the, a lot of this was started by Anderson with his book. He started that, that was actually kicked off by an article he had written a year earlier. And there's been a bunch of responses to his book, saying, you know, his book was saying free is fundamental. It's a force of reckoning. It will be the driving economy, the driving force behind the economy of the 21st century and of the net. And other people said, no, it's just a price. It's not really different. It's just a pricing decision that you have to make. There's fundamental costs no matter what you do. Look at what has worked with free, really, really worked. What are you going to point to? If, sorry? Log me in. Log me in. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of ways to go. Well, Google is free and it works, right? Yeah, this advertising based systems, when the advertising works, work really well. But is it a fundamental core thing that you always have to think about? Free only works if you have that magic way of monetizing each one of those free services. Uh, a, a, a center point of this conversation revolves around YouTube, right? YouTube's a great free service. It's a great free service. They actually even make a little revenue. But it costs Google, who knows, somewhere between half a billion and a billion dollars a year to run that service. Mark Cuban likes to call it the stupidest acquisition they've ever made. You'd have to be a moron, he said, to buy YouTube. Who thinks YouTube was a good acquisition by Google? Cool. <laughs> yeah. So Cuban's the guy who said, when you succeed by free, you'll end up dying by free. Well, maybe he's right. All right, so that's my cool slide about Anderson. And Malcolm Gladwell wrote a, a, a review in which he took issue with a lot of Anderson's thinking in The New Yorker. And again, this is, I, I recommend reading the book and going to the blogosphere. I think it's very useful for people who are thinking about how they launch their product. And I'll get into that a little bit as I finish up. Me personally, do I care about free? Well, as I mentioned before, I'm in the music business. So yeah, um, I think about free all the time. It's sort of the, the center point to every day. How do you deal with free? Uh, every night I, w I wake up in a cold sweat with this blue and <laughs> green cat going across my vision. <laughs> Downloaded songs from Napster back then, if you were old enough. OK. It's off the record. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> OK, this is off the record. Still downloading music? Anybody? <laughs> shoplifting? Anybody shop? <laughs> OK, who misses Napster? Come on. Who misses it? Not the new one. You can't count the new one. It's, it's not the same, right? Yeah, you miss it. I know you do. So I, 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 like, I like to call it the, the most Sisyphean thing you can possibly do is to try to sell things in a world where music seems to be, the item you're trying to sell seems to be free. Well, let me talk a little bit about that. But there's certainly a lot of free in my space. I am not free, really. I'm a store. I'll explain about that in a second. Um, I've been having this conversation recently with a guy who just graduated from college, a really smart guy, software engineer. And I kind of ran into him. We were, we were chatting. I said, you should check out my site, lala.com. It's really cool. It's great. He said, what does it do? And I said, think about it as an island on iTunes. It, you can get all your music on the net, and it's a store. It's really cool. He said, OK, I'll take a look. And much to my surprise, he, he, he didn't you know, send me a quick reply. He said, I looked at it. It's cool. He sent me a very long very lengthy and thoughtful reply, which had a ton of kind words about Lala. He said it's you know, one of the best user interfaces I've seen in, in any space. He really said that, I'm not lying. It's not, not a shameless pitch. He said, your model is really interesting. It's really a great place to come and find, discover, and listen to music. That made me feel great. He also said the following, I'll read it, which didn't make me feel so good. You also won't see me buying any music from the site. <laughs> My reasons are both economic and philosophical. I have a philosophical problem with paying for something of which there is an infinite supply. <laughs> Price, he's teaching me some basic economics here. I appreciated it. Price goes to zero when supply goes to infinity. Do you pay for sand on the beach? 
I want to point out, this is one of the few pictures where I have attribution. You can't see it. It's there. So speaks the youth of America. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can laugh all you want. That's the way I would say a lot, whether they articulate it as elegantly as he does or not, or just, you know, it's free, dude. Um, it's a pretty picture. But it drives the 20th century media patterns absolutely nuts.